Um, Hyperparameter tuning is a common source of a lot of experiments, right? So you do, you do, you find the rough kind of model, but then you want to know, like, should it be three layers or, or 30 layers or something in between? So it's useful to have software that actually helps you search. So instead of just me saying, okay, well, it's going to be three or five layers or seven layers or nine layers and, and so on and enumerating all the possibilities, I want to be able to just easily say, okay, I want to kind of search over learning rates between 0 0.0001 and 0 0.1 and 128, 256, and 512 layers, and then have some kind of software intelligently search the space of, of possibilities there. So HyperOpt is a Python package that is, um, uh, has been around for a while, and it's for hyperparameter optimization of all kinds of machine learning models, not only deep learning, in this lecture, I thought I would highlight a, just a simple wrapper over HyperOpt, specifically for Keras, because a lot of us probably use Keras. And so um, it could be as easy as just saying, you know, model that add dropout uniform over zero, like between zero and one. So this just means, like, I will, when I instantiate this model, HyperAss is going to uh, sample some dropout rate, right? And then it will search over the possibilities of all of these values for all of these layers using either a random search or this kind of more complicated technique, uh, tree of Parson estimators. So that's the basic idea. There's a whole startup <clears throat> called SigOpt around this, which is basically a hyperparameter tuning as a service. So I tune my model on my hardware, but I essentially make a call to, to SigOpt and I say, hey, I am now running with this set of parameters and this is the performance I'm getting. And then SigOp can call back to me and say, OK, kill this experiment. It's not going to be as good as this other experiment you're running. Or it can say, OK, like now that I know the metric for this set of parameters, try this set of parameters. So it's a little bit of a back and forth between my training and hyperparameter optimization as a service. Ray, the project I mentioned earlier, also has a library called Tune, which seems like this is basically written by like grad students uh, here. So they just implement all the state-of-the-art algorithms because uh, they need to for like publishing papers. You need to get the baselines. And so all of these are implemented in Raytune. You got population-based training, uh, hyperband, which is cool. And so what's cool about some of these is that they actually redirect compute resources towards promising areas. What that means is I might launch eight experiments. But as they train, pretty clearly, like four of them are just never going to be as good as the four that are, as the other four. And at that point, it makes sense to just stop them and launch with some other parameter settings. So Hyperband is uh, a well-known paper that kind of describes a technique for that. And Weights and Biases actually also has a solution for this, and we'll see that in lab four coming up. You guys have any questions before I go into the last part, which is going to be all in one? So this is a question on visualization tools. So I don't know if you want to get into that now. Visualization of what? Um, specifically on data um, bias and data distributions. Are there any good tools for visualizing that? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I think you should probably just record that under the data management lecture. Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, uh, more question? Yeah. Um, do you have any recommendations on frameworks for architecture search, or would you just use the same stuff as hyperparameter op uh, optimization? Yeah, that's a good question. So architecture search versus hyperparameter search is sometimes maybe even called AutoML, which is basically saying, like, just find the right model and the right parameters to train on this data set. I don't know of a framework for architecture search. Um, do you? I don't know of a framework. I mean, most, most of the time, like doing architecture search doesn't really make sense unless you work at Google because it's just so expensive. Um, I think like you can do searches over part of your architecture, like you can just search over you know, the width of a, a layer or something like that, but then you can just use um, hyperparameter search algorithms for that. Yeah, and it kind of depends on what you see as architecture and what you see as a hyperparameter. So like the number of convolutional layers in your convnet could be a hyperparameter because it's just it's a convnet of diff of different depth, 
but those are also different architectures. But architecture search can get pretty interesting if you like see it almost as like genetic algorithms and you kind of manipulate the, the structure of the graph. I haven't seen a, a framework for that. I think I should probably just keep going though. I only have five minutes. <laughs>